All right. Um, I just want to welcome Vicky. Vicky, please come and just do and head away. And whatever you want to do is fine. You know, I often thank you for having me this morning. I often find that um, I like to often ask the Lord why I'm actually here. <laughs> and uh, be led of the Spirit. You know, we've, we've just sung a song here about being children of God. You know, uh, in Romans 8, 14, it says... Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And as I was just sort of looking, I, I'm just excited to be around you. Because I felt the Lord saying, hungry hearts. There are hungry hearts in this place. And, you know, in Jeremiah it says, when you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. And so many people are seeking either things from God or answers to life. But it's when you seek him, when you seek him, Jesus, with all your heart, you will find him. And he is all we need. He is all we need. I just want to look at the songs that we've sung first. Um, the first thing that came to me was, when we enter his presence with praise, he enters our circumstances with power. Yeah. You know, in, in the Psalms, I think it is, it says, those who bring a sacrifice, those who bring a sacrifice of thank offerings, who praise me, prepare the way for me to show them the joy of my salvation. And it's not about your circumstances. We praise him despite our circumstances. And when you listen to part of my testimony, I'm not going to be able to share it all, but what God has on my heart, you will realise that all the way I've just had to keep my eyes on Jesus. I'm not called to understand everything. We're to trust in the Lord in all our ways, never to rely on what we think we know, acknowledge him in everything we do, and he will make the path straight, Proverbs 3, 5 to 7. So it is that constant. That's what's hard, particularly in the world today, is that we so easily get distracted. We must keep the main thing the main thing. Amen. The main thing is all about Jesus and it's all about the kingdom. And coming here today and seeing spirit-filled believers worshipping in spirit and in truth in this place is what God is looking for. Yeah. He, is, he is seeking those. In Chronicles it says yeah. he's seeking those who earnestly are pursuing him to strengthen them. To strengthen them because who knows... This world is a hard walk. It says, mm -hmm. you know, you'll have trouble in the world, but be of good cheer, I've overcome it. Yes. But you right. cannot overcome yeah. the world without the Spirit of God. Yeah. It right. is those who are led by the Spirit yeah. that are yeah. children of God. And another word, you know, we sung, didn't we? Let me have a look. We sung here. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. But we also, I want to look at just 2 Corinthians about the veil being lifted. It said, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I once was, was blind, but now I see. What is that? It is a spiritual seeing. And this is so much in the church, even through my testimony and me coming to church, is that in Timothy it talks about having a form of godliness, but denying its power. People got around me, but they didn't have the power to set me free. They prayed all sorts of things, but they didn't have, you know, in the Sons of Sceva where it talks about, yeah. they all got around, and, you know, and they were praying, and, and, and the guy who was being delivered, I can't remember the full verse, but he says, Paul, I know, too, but who are you? Yeah. <laughs> who are you? Because I've known when God has put anointed people around me, he would send just the right person at the right time when I would manifest in the middle of a service. I couldn't walk into a service without shaking. I couldn't walk. The first experience I had, even as a little girl, God had his hand on me because I always felt cleaner when I'd been to church. I didn't understand why, because the veil hadn't yet been lifted. But I would walk into church and I used to think, I just feel better and cleaner and lighter because I'd laid my burdens down. Mm -hmm. And nowadays we have a church where we have people in the world that don't know God and we're living in a godless society, I say, at the, at the ministry I have called Fit for Life in, in, at Crestoria in Delft and 
so we become a pill popping nation. Mm -hmm. We only yeah. see the little yeah. GP, general yeah. practitioner, instead of God as well as the great physician. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because years ago, mm -hmm. people went to church with a problem. Mm -hmm. And what was said in the pulpit was reinforced in society yes. at home. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, we don't get that. Re That's the spiritual covering. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's God's spiritual covering for a blessed life. You know, it, I heard something this morning when it says, don't, don't prepare the road for your children. Prepare your children for the road. I thought, how powerful is that? Prepare your children for the road. That's what God does in his word. He prepares us for this journey called life, which is going to be difficult. But be of good cheer, I've overcome it. With the spirit of God, we have no excuse. We have no excuse to say, well, I just couldn't. You know, God never tempts us. No. We're led by our own desires. Mm -hmm. But if we call on him mm -hmm. in that day of trouble and we let the Holy Spirit come and do that work that our sister shared at the beginning, he wants to set us free and whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So 2 Corinthians says that, I just want to read this. Therefore, since we have such a hope, 2 Corinthians 3.12, we're very bold. <laughs> we're very bold. In these days, and as I share what God is doing, we need to be very, very bold. Mm -hmm. And that's what I didn't see. I saw a lot of Christians who were afraid. So when I was going in with my difficulties of needing major deliverance in my life, having been brought up in satanic ritual abuse, and I saw people, I'm not decrying people, please don't, it was word decry, I'm not putting people down, or, but I saw fear. And I used to think, well, how can your God be bigger if you're afraid of my God? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. How can your God be bigger? You know, the world, it says that the prince of the air is the, is the God of this world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The devil is the God yeah. of this world. Yeah. You're either a child of God or you're a child of the devil. Yeah. People don't like to hear that, but that is the truth. Mm -hmm. It's immaterial of what we believe. Truth is truth. It's like saying, I don't believe in Australia because I've never been. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. <laughs> and we decry, you know, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Otherwise, you'd be able to prevent my arrest. My kingdom is from another place. Kingdom is spiritual. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kingdom is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And if we look at 2 Corinthians here, Therefore, since we have such a hope, we're very bold. We're not like Moses who would put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. But their minds were made dull. For to this day, the same veil remains where the old covenant is read. Mm -hmm. We talked a bit about that on, on Sunday when I came to church here. It was talking about religion. Yeah. Where the old covenant's read, the veil still remains. It has not been removed because only in Christ yeah. is it taken away. Mm -hmm. Only your identity in Christ is what lifts the veil of deception from your life. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, oh, wow. please, yes. can we have an amen? Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. It's as simple as that. Yes. Oh, my word. Mm -hmm. Whenever anyone yeah. turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. He does it. He does it for us on our behalf. Now the Lord is the Spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is there's freedom and we who with unveiled faces. I used to say to people, don't tell me about him, show me. God showed me him through Doreen when he moved me here for a season. God showed me him through Margaret. Yeah. Don't talk to me about him. Show me him. Yeah. Let me see the light. Let, you're a city on a hill. Yeah. Let me see your good works. Not, not for your good works, so that I will glorify your God. Why would they do that? Why would they put lunch on for nothing? Why would, I, used to, I used to want to pay everybody that wanted to pray with me. I couldn't believe that anybody would want to do something for me yeah. for nothing. I thought they're weird. <laughs> So wonderful because the kingdom is not of this world. It's the opposite to love your enemies, to bless those who curse you. Love is a powerful weapon and strongholds come tumbling down. I can stand here today and say that I have forgiven my father who is a Satanist. I have forgiven my mother who is a witch because they are a product 
of their own upbringing. Yes. Yeah. The veil has not been removed. Mm. Where you've got terrorism, where you've got other religions, the veil has not been removed. It's only in Christ that it's taken away. Yeah. So we can't judge. It's the Holy Spirit's work. You can't save anybody. I'm not there to save my parents. God's, God's the one, by yeah. his Holy Spirit, that does the salvation. But we can witness for the truth mm. yeah. that might make people yeah. search and seek. Yeah. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory. Mm. What are we here for? His glory. Yes. Mm. Everything's for his glory. Amen. Woo! Everything's for his glory. <laughs> and there's such a joy that yeah. springs up in your spirit when it's all about him. Yeah. Yeah. There's no high like the most high, I say to every drug addict I meet, there's no high. I was bound in eating disorders, bound in self-hatred, bound in the fear of food, oh, I was frightened of my own shadow, bound in drinking. Yeah. I know what bondage is, yeah. but I also know that who the sun sets for is for Amen. Amen. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed. Our sister shared earlier, this is the journey. We're being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. <laughs> you know, I found that even in, in my praise, I, I, I'm going, yay! I find myself going, yay, yay! Because it's yes and amen. Yes. Yes. And it has to happen there yes, amen. before it manifests. Yes. 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 And we're in these times oh, now yeah. where the intercessors mm -hmm. are, are praying. We're in the greatest times mm -hmm. for the church. Oh. Oh. The old <laughs> We're in the greatest times of the church of what God is unveiling because God is unveiling in Malachi. I was so excited when Mark shared Malachi, Malachi 3 because that's what God's put on my heart. That the devil has got away for years, for, for set generations that he doesn't exist. So when bad things happen, everybody blames God. And they don't realise, and that was my biggest thing, having been brought up in ritual abuse, having, from the age of three, being abused by my father, to then um, being abused corporately, taken out at night, dressed, dressed in cloaks, taken to locations, drugged, abused by various people, organised. I didn't know at that time that that was Satanism. That was just my childhood. Being given a drink that made me feel dopey and taken out at night. And you couldn't see anybody's faces. You see, deception. Yeah. Why do they all dress in cloaks? The occult means hidden. Yeah. You know, if what they're doing is right, come out to the light. <laughs> God's bringing them out to the light. You know, God's bringing them to the light so that people will clearly distinguish in Malachi. Good from evil. Yeah. And God has always, I blame God. If there's a God, how can you have let that happen to me? I've, I've had more arguments with vicars and more people would see me coming and think, oh my word. Mar I've been in Margaret's Bible study where but, 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 but. And praise God for the people that let me ask those questions. You know, in the parable of the sower, it talks about the people who fall away, this is one of my mo most profound scriptures, when people don't understand the kingdom, they fall away. The times when I would be manifesting because I needed deliverance from evil spirits in the church and people would think I'd died. So the leader would tell the Sunday school, you know, what happened to that woman? Did she die? Because nobody could explain what was happening. Mm. Now that creates fear. But God would always send somebody. I remember being in Florida with Kristen. She was only only little. And we went over to the Todd Bentley revival. And yes, Todd Bentley mm. fell. I was that close to getting on the stage. Mm. I got my foot on the stage and Todd Bentley was there. And the Holy Spirit pulled me right back. And I didn't go up on the stage. But it didn't mean that he didn't use yeah, the yeah. other parts of that movement. Yeah. I learned to worship there. I, 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 I got around people. But I, I, I moved into a different area of worship. And I remember being out there with Kristen and thinking, what am I doing out here? 
what, am, what, am I, what have I come out here for? God has led me every single time to the right place at the right time mm. to do a new, to transform and do a new thing. And I remember being out there and somehow I was, somebody was sharing a testimony about, uh, about having toothpicks in their feet and it triggered me. You see, when you've had trauma, not just satanic ritual abuse, but when you've had trauma of any kind, in order to cope as a child, you go somewhere. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> different personalities. Mm. My husband had a different wife every week. It was very exciting. Yeah. Sometimes it wasn't exciting. But who on earth? I was never boring. That but I had a different personality. Do you know? And the joy of the Lord mm. is your strength. Yes. I want you to know when you listen to me speak, there is victory. Yeah. I am Sealed, saved, and delivered. <laughs> Sealed, <laughs> saved, and, and delivered. And what does it say in Scripture? Sealed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. the journey's been easy, because no. when people don't believe, that's the hardest battle. Yes. Is when you're trying to share your story, and people just don't believe. Mm. You know, well, you're a fruitcake. I mean, I've written a book, it's not ready for publishing, but it's called Fruitcake or Bearing Fruit. <laughs> <laughs> because so many people oh, say she's just a fruitcake. Yeah. Now, 30 years on from when I first disclosed, yeah. Jeffrey Dickens was my MP <clears throat> in Saddleworth. Yeah. I don't know whether you all, you know, regularly look at politics and watch the news, but we've had the missing dossier yeah. of Geoffrey Dickens. Mm -hmm. Geoffrey Dickens was my MP in Saddleworth in 92. And Geoffrey asked me to go on Panorama with him to talk about SRA. So that's how long we've been trying mm. to get this out in the open. That's how long the devils remained mm. hidden. Yeah. Yeah. We now, when you look at what's happening in society, we now have the missing dossier, VIP paedophile ring. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> How can they all be paedophiles? The Cyril Smith. Mm -hmm. Cyril Smith was yeah. a Satanist. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Savile was a Satanist. Mm -hmm. When that veil is lifted, people will understand why the laws are being changed. Satanism is a religion, mm -hmm. just like anything else. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until the Lord brought me to live them um, and he, he, he had the exact location at first I came to number five Eagle's Nest he told me when Kristen was 13 that he was taking me to the Eagle's Nest for a season out of the Serpent's Way and he told me that I would be here for three years and I came Kristen's just turned 19 uh, I came here when she was 13 to when she was 16 and that was a real, there was so much going on back at home. Uh, my case has been looked at by the police twice before. It's now with them right now for the third time. Mm. They're looking at it now. New evidence has gone in. But they will do everything mm. to cover it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it gets yeah. so far. But do you know, yeah. God is in control. Yeah. Yeah. God gave me a scripture when I was going to take my own life. I was walking one day and I... I didn't know my Bible well, but he's always spoken to me profoundly. And I, I thought he spoke to everybody like that. So I would go up and say, did, mm. you, did you hear that? And then, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> no, I did. Yeah. But I think he needed to get my attention because when, when you're called to, <laughs> to a certain thing, I've had those profound experiences where I've fallen out of bed. And, God, and I would go to a leader and say, is this normal? Mm -hmm. You know, is this normal that this would happen, mm -hmm. that we would shape like that? Yeah. That we would <laughs> groan like that? <laughs> Because you see, it's understanding the kingdom. Yeah. It's understanding worshipping him in spirit. Nobody ever taught me. So when these things were happening, I thought, well, is that witchcraft? Mm -hmm. Am I still yeah. in that? Am I still, am I free? Mm -hmm. what's, what's God and what isn't? And that's where the church stops. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, and it says, doesn't it, beware of quenching the spirit mm -hmm. yeah. and saying yeah. that the spirit is the enemy. We've got to be very careful what we're saying yeah. is the dark side and what we're saying is the truth yeah. because yeah. God is spirit mm -hmm. and the more that we encounter him our worship changes yes. the more we encounter him the more revelation our worship mm -hmm. changes mm -hmm. and so when I came to to Lytham, he said he was bringing me out of the serpent's way and it was wonderful it was just wonderful and I first moved to five eagles nest and I remember Doreen saying that number five meant grace yeah. mm -hmm. 
And then um, he moved me to 21 Eagles Nest. And at the time, he gave me the scripture in Revelation where it says, um, uh, I, I have opened the doors that no man can shut, and I have shut the doors that no man can open. Mm. And I will cause the church of Satan mm. to fall down at your feet mm. and acknowledge that I have loved you. Mm. Mm. Wow. I want you to hold on to that. Yes. Mm. To acknowledge what? That I have. Mm. And I always wear Jesus loves you belt. What is the belt in the armor of God? Mm. Truth. 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 Everything in your life is a divine connection. Mm. I didn't even know why I was drawn to these belts. <laughs> and everything, when you're seeking to hear him, when you're just saying, I don't understand that, can you just explain why mm. Jesus died? And can you just explain why? He will always because he's alive yes. and he wants that intimacy into me you see he wants that intimacy and I used to feel sometimes in church that people wouldn't let me move into that intimacy I was so desperate I was so desperate I didn't just want I don't want to I'm not bothered if I'm on any stage I just wanted to survive this journey make no mistake I'm so glad that this video is going to South Africa because I once met, um, people have, have said awful things like, oh, look at the state, but she's such an attention seeker, and she's just, I needed a lot of attention. <laughs> I needed a lot of spiritual attention. Yeah. I had children to raise. Kristen's got two older brothers, that they're now 13 and 27. When I first disclosed the abuse, uh, my son was 18 months old. Yeah. And I knew that what I was, I had no memories from under the age of 14. And I knew that, Bad things had happened when I was little, mm -hmm. but I thought I just can't go there. How, where do you go with that? Mm -hmm. Who's going to believe you? Who's going to believe a child? And then when it's linked to that, and then it's linked to that, and then it's who on earth is going to believe you? Mm -hmm. But there was a, a, an African minister that came over called Arnold, and he worked in the orphanages, and he would talk about children getting healed of AIDS in the orphanages. Wonderful, wonderful truths. And I remember. Um, I, I would often be, uh, uh, you know, difficult because I'd have those questions that some leaders couldn't answer. Yeah. So I suppose I was a bit of a frustration because I, 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 I was seeking with all my heart and I was saying, mm -hmm. but why this? And they couldn't answer, which I understand because they've not had that experience. Mm -hmm. And SRA isn't, isn't talked about mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. But this, this minister, this particular night, I remember he was coming to speak and... Uh, I said to the Lord, I said, if you want me to go and listen to this man, if you want me at that meeting, you, you know, you just remind me. Anyway, I was putting the crumble out. The church was only across the road. I was putting the crumble out. It was a Sunday, and I felt, Lord, say, I want you to go. And when I arrived at the meeting, uh, I saw some people who were quite hostile towards me, and, you know, mm. she's here, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and I walked in, bless them now, and I walked in. And I sat down and he began to speak because I've been talking, because I, 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 I was a beauty therapist before I became a Christian, I'm still a beauty therapist, but God was showing me about um, the occult coming into beauty therapy. Um, you know, other religions coming into beauty therapy. You've got Reiki, you've got channeling, you've got, you've got, and I was saying, excuse me, your own therapy, uh, reflexology, yoga, for goodness sake, you know, are you awake mm -hmm. to the realities of bondage in the church? Yeah, and, yeah. and it was like, oh, Vicky, stop being divisive. And oh, Vicky, just, you know, just be quiet. And just, but I couldn't because I knew mm -hmm. that I know that prevention is better than cure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And people, I was working at the other end of, of the ministry that God had raised me up to in deliverance. And I just think, well, stop walking. You know, church, you know, you should be leading the world to stop people walking through those doors. Yes. If people choose yeah. to walk through those doors, that's between them and God. Yeah. But yeah. the church's role is to lead the world, not mm. the world to lead the church. Yeah. Let's go on. Yeah. You know, it says, I will prepare my people for what's ahead. Yes. So we should know. Yeah. And if we don't know, it says the Spirit will show you yeah. if you're asking. The Spirit will give you the words in every situation if you're asking. Mm. Anyway, I, I, I went and I walked in and he said, he said, in my country, he said, um, it's very clear. Spirituality is very clear. You either go to church you go to the doctor or you go to the witch doctor. He said, here, it's dressed in suits and overalls. Mm. And not a pin dropped when I wow. sat there. And I yeah. just thought, God bless you, brother, for coming all the way from Africa.
Africa to tell the church. And we're still in that place of, oh, I have a bit of Reiki and I have a bit of this and I... There's new age in the church, there's witch, not everything that shakes, rattles and rolls is the Holy Spirit. And that's why we're told to discern the Spirit. We're told that's what the gifts of the Spirit are there for. That's why we need the gifts of prophecy, that's why we need the apostolic and all the different gifts for the body to function. Because we're living in very, very wishy-washy times yes. where yes. anything goes and we can be, we see this mm. now mm. we can be anything the common law we can be anything we want we can mm. we can decide our own fate well that's mm. we know that god's always moved through history yes. and history is his story mm. Mm. Yes. history yes. is his yes. story yes. from beginning to end yes. and all the times now in 2 timothy about rebellion and children being rebellious to their parents you know the word of God is true. Nation will rise against nation. There'll be famines, earthquakes. These are the beginning of birth pains because yeah. he's coming back. Yeah. But he's coming back for us to have our lamps lit. Yes. There's nothing more exciting. That doesn't mean that the call of God on our life is that we're all in the church. We can be called in business. Yes. I'm still a beauty therapist, part of the thing where I've had people saved in the middle of a facial massage. I've had mm. people saved when I've been filing the nails down and God said, pray for her. And I'm thinking, <laughs> she might jump over them. The nails have got shorter and shorter. <laughs> pray for her. And then I pray for her and she's leapt over the thing for her salvation because she's just been diagnosed with cancer. Oh, wow. Wow. I've had the most profound, because you see, it's not religion. Mm -hmm. no, no. <laughs> no, I've got to, you know, I'm sure that any any person who moves in the prophetic where God said, go and tell that lady she's having a baby, and you think, oh no. <laughs> and, then you do, and then you say, well, she won't be in if I go, and, she won't, and then you go, and then she's in, and then you give the word, oh, I hope you were right, you know, the same to God of the universe, well, I hope you were right that she's having a baby, and then you get, you go, and then a few months yeah. later, I wanted you to be the first to know, well, thank you, that I'm really in. You know, because the children of God are led by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Yeah. And it says, but not by might nor by power, but oh, by spirit. my spirit. Oh, mm -hmm. So we need to grow. And that's yes. why we get around the word. We get around all the different th the teachings that you've been having. I'm so excited because there are areas in the church now where I think, you know, there's so much sexual immorality. There's people yeah, still yeah. living together and they've been in the church for years. And what are you doing still, you know, yeah. what are you doing yeah. still living together? Do you know what I mean? And that's not because I don't love them. Don't, don't hear me wrong, but we're representing yes. yeah. the body of Christ, yeah. you know, and it causes people to stumble. Mm -hmm. The little yeast destroys the batch. Yes. Yeah. It causes people to stumble. Well, if they can do that, I can do that. We're to have one audience and an audience mm -hmm. of one, and it's his. Mm -hmm. it's, it's him. Yeah. And, and to the point where I am now with, with my journey, God brought me here for three years, and I didn't understand. I knew that my family dressed in cloaks and all the rest of it, but I didn't even hear the word Satanism. Mm. Or, and then I, I realised as I was going along, you know, it's almost like you on your journey, you're getting to know who you are, mm. Mm. how you tick. You know, why have I got an eating disorder? Why, why am I frightened of everything? Yeah. Why, why when I go into church and I hear the word sin, am I under the pew? Yeah. I would be triggered. Why would I would I shake violently when the wine and the bread were being served? Mm -hmm. I would shake violently. Because the blood of Jesus is so powerful yeah. mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. demon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's won. We sit here today mm -hmm. from victory standpoint. Mm -hmm. And I've been asked to speak and uh, in Scotland uh, um, it, on Saturday, whether I'll get there, I don't know. But you know, I always want to share yes. from a place of victory. Mm -hmm. You see a woman who stands here where everybody who knows me knows the journey's not been easy. Mm -hmm. Knows that, you know, going through with, with my daughter and what my children have had to see and the threats upon me. Mm -hmm. Because I live in the centre of Saddleworth. Already Andrew Womack um, and, and, and his ministry know that Saddleworth is the centre of witchcraft. Wow. Yeah. But do you know where I live? I live on King Street. Uh, <laughs> it leads to High Street. Yeah, it leads to yeah. 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 And the name of the shop is Christoria, which originally was Chris and my husband's name put together. Okay. He was a Catholic. 
But then God showed me Christ in me, Christoria. Mm. Then in the middle of Christoria, story. Mm. Yeah. And I remember going to watch Nicky Cruz once for the first time, and I remember sitting in the, watching him speak, and he wrote to me a lot, he, he would write to me, and you know the one thing about that man, and I remember meeting him when he last spoke in Britain, and he signed the book, the, the Devil Has No Mother, and I said, you know, you have been profound on my journey, because my case is now with the police. Wow. And I believe that satanic ritual abuse is going to be exposed. And you were profound. I wanted to tell that brother that you were profound in writing to me and saying, yeah. will you be a finisher? Mm. I'm so wow. mad. <laughs> he wrote to me and said, will you, when I'm praying, will you be a finisher? But you know, all through his letters, it was nothing but scripture. Yes. Mm. Because it's the word of God that never returns void. Yes. And it accomplishes what it's meant to do. Wow. And I thought, how does he know scripture like he does? You see, not a form of godliness, but denying its power. He knew, he knew the word. The word was in him. Yeah. And I used to think, how does this man know the word so much? And when I went to Margaret's Bible study over here, and we did all the old, the way of the spirit and the Old Testament teachings and, and all about child sacrifice. And, and I thought, I remember just, I'd get like a light switching on every time. Oh, so that's it. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm. And it's the same devil yesterday, today, and forever. Mm. The mm. same way that they worshipped the enemy in the Old Testament is the same way they worship him today. Mm. You've got Doreen Irvin, who came out of witchcraft. Mm. You've so many people who've written books of being rescued. Mm. You want me to come away from my family, Corinthians, it says separate from everything that's unclean. Mm. I had a very clear word, and that was difficult. I didn't want to leave my mum, I didn't want, I was hoping that God would zap them mm -hmm. and they'd just say they were sorry and we'd all yeah. float mm -hmm. off on a, you know, a pea green boat, one of those, and it didn't happen. You see, his ways aren't our ways. My father never repented when I went to him and I said, I just want to get better, Dad. I didn't go to him to go to, no. to, to the police. I just said, God, I said, Dad, I just want to get better. I'm ill. I need to deal with, you know, and, and he did, he, he was very sad. And he, I remember him coming towards me, almost wanting to help me, but couldn't help me. You know, because he was in a battle of his own. Yeah. I remember yeah. when my father used to abuse me, he used to cry afterwards. And he'd say, why do you make me do it? Mm. Because he's in bondage. Paedophiles are in bondage. Mm. Yeah. Because it's spiritual. Yeah. But I used to see that in my dad, where, and that's where children get, because they're in their own battle for freedom, yeah. because often they've been abused themselves, mm -hmm. you know, but God brought me away from my family, and then I remember, um, I've been in church a while, I've gone to the police, it's a long story, it's absolutely breathtaking really, I met Diane Corr from Child Watch, who knew Jeffrey Dickens, and, and uh, I, I remember going to L.L. Grange, I went to L.L. Grange for a weekend for, for some healing, and I, I was of the the feeling that, you know, well, I've got all this infection, it's like a, a sore, isn't it? And I thought, God, you're just going to get all this infection out, all my memories out, and then you're going to slap that plaster off, and I'm off on my troubles. That's how I saw God's healing. I didn't see God's healing as me serving him. I didn't see God's healing me to know him personally. And I went to L.L. Grange, and before I'd gone to L.L. Grange, Diane Cole had told me to from Child Watch and she's all on all the SRA videos. She she worked closely with Jeffrey Dickens. She said, um, you know, you need to you need to go to the police and at least do your bit and tell them. Mm. So I um, I had the meeting with the CID on the Monday morning and I went to LL on the Friday. And when I got to LL Grange, I had two counsellors, one from Rochdale and one from over that way, and the first thing they gave me was a book. They said, we feel to give you this book, and it was Chasing Satan by Diane Corr. I didn't even know it was SRA then. I knew I'd been abused, and I remembered the cloaks and that, but I didn't know what it was. And they gave me the book Chasing Satan, and, and I remember saying, I've just spoken to that lady this morning. But I didn't have time to read it, so I put it in the bottom of my case, and, uh, and I went through the ministry, and there were certain things, and I remember the, um, I remember the um, counsellors saying to each other, you know, witchcraft here but we can't deal with everything at once and I remember thinking you mean you're going to send me home I'm not going to deal with me this is why you have to have the fellowship outside the church this is why you have to have the somebody that you can ring in the midnight hour 
You mean you're going to send me home to the wolves? And you're not going to deal with me all here? Because it's a journey. And God knew that I didn't know Jesus well enough to handle everything right at that moment. I had the ministry that, uh, that they gave, and they gave me, before I went back to the police, they gave me the scripture in Isaiah, you'll get the, uh, your lips are touched with the burning coals, your, your guilt is gone, who will go? And God's asking, will you go? And I remember saying, yes, I'll go. Whatever I need to do, I didn't realise how big it was. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple faith, yes, I'll go. Mm -hmm. Child of God faith, childlike faith, yes, I'll go. Mm -hmm. And I came back and uh, I met the police on the Monday. Um, and I went for a walk, and that's where I pray. I, I don't, uh, uh, prayer to me is praying the Spirit on all occasions. Yes. Prayer is talking to God all the time. I don't make a religion out of it. I don't make a, I talk to it all the time. It's, it's, it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Hi, that's great. Isn't that great? That's great. It's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Childlike faith. And I went walking and I said, Lord, please um, help me remember anything that's relevant for the police inquiry. I just give this this interview to, with you uh, uh, for you uh, to you. And I came back from that walk, and before I'd always had memories that had come up either through somebody talking to me or counselling. I'd never had a memory just come suddenly. Mm -hmm. And she was with me from two o'clock, and it was about six o'clock, so she'd been with me for about four hours. And um, I sat there and I suddenly had this memory. Now, before going to our Grange, I'd gone to a place called the Morning Light. Because I'd heard that there was a spiritual healing place that was Christian, you're listening, mm -hmm. <laughs> that dealt with regression and memories. Mm -hmm. And I remember my minister coming and saying, you can't go there, you know, that's of the devil. And I said, don't talk about the devil in my house, get out. I said, these are very nice people and they want to help me. So I'd got, I'd got plans to go to the morning light. And L.L. Grange wrote to me the week I was going to the morning light. So God was intervening then. And I said, oh no, I, I've got, they'd offered me two weeks, whereas L.L. had offered me a weekend. So I thought, oh, no, I need at least two weeks. I'm such a difficult case, I need at least two weeks. When I went to the morning light, it was all dull and damp and roof was leaking, it just didn't have a good, I had a sanctuary and a red scarf tied around the dog and, and, I, walked, and I said to my husband, we had my middle son then, he, he was about, he, he was oh, under one, I remember saying to my husband, what do you think, it doesn't feel very nice, it certainly wasn't a blessed place, but when I had regression therapy there, all the cloaks and all the stuff that happened to me as a child was there, and I, and I remember the, the counsellor saying, well, who are you? Right, I was from another life. Or, <laughs> and I kept saying, it's me. It's me with long hair. Well, who are you? Is it Joan of Arc? Is it, you know, because they're into all these past lives and all these things. God is so graceful, though, how he brings you through and shows you. I'm even grateful for that experience because I know that the enemy has some truth, yeah. but Jesus has all the truth. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. I had the memories of the clothes and all the rest of it. And I said, no, it's me with long hair. And I described it, and I gave all these tapes to the police. Never got the tapes back. Anyway, that weekend, came back from the morning light, still as messed up as ever, just with all these memories. <laughs> so I've got all the memories and not the healing. So that's even worse. So I was really, really messed up. Went to Ellen Grange for the weekend. They gave me this book uh, about ch uh, chasing Satan. Came back, saw the policewoman, and at six o'clock I had a full-blown flashback because I'd said to the Lord, let me remember anything relevant for the police inquiry. And I had a, um, a flashback of the cobbles and the cloaks, and that was my father's house. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, the cobbles? I said, it's not a past life. I said, it's my dad's house. And my father would have give shoes to the orphanage children. We used to call them the orphanage children. And just as you've got now, you've got Melanie Shaw, I don't know whether anybody's heard Melanie Shaw's been in solitary confinement for some time. She, um, she spoke out about being abused in the care homes and she could name the VIPs that came. She can name the number plates and she is silenced. You need to pray for Melanie Shaw's freedom mm -hmm. because she can name the VIP pedophiles that yeah. abused her. Yeah. And... Um, what I'm saying is that now is the time when you look at what's happening 
but God is lifting the veil of deception across our nation. That's why the laws are being changed. That's why they're wanting to teach children under age sex. Because all it's doing is legalising paedophilia. Mm -hmm. What do you do with all these paedophiles that are supposed to be upstanding citizens? You know, and we're seeing the changes in the law, but there's an acceleration of what's happening because we're living in the end times. Mm-hmm. And what excites me is that about it is that the Bible is true. And I, um, I, my case went to the police in '92. Then they closed it. Then it was linked to. I, c- I could go on and on. It was linked to the Leslie Mer- Mulseed trial. If you ever remember mm-hmm. Leslie Mulseed and yes. Stephen Kishko was. Uh, mm. accused of her yeah. murder and he was put in prison for 16 years and he didn't do it. Mm. Well, there was a linking um, that I've always felt that my father was linked to that case. And always, I was the same age as that little girl when she died and I've always felt just in my spirit that I was linked to that little girl. And I remember having prayer with Maranatha, Dennis Ridley was a, a, a really an amazing spiritual father to me, the leader of Maranatha, and he called me to have people pray with me um, for, for some time. And uh, I've always had a vision that I will visit my father in prison with a Bible in my hand. Mm. And as a little girl, I used to watch Crown Court, where they put the wigs on, and I've always known I would be stood in court. And I dream that when I'm stood in court, that when they ask me, you're very religious, aren't you? Mm-hmm. And I say, no, I've just taken an oath from the Bible to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So yes. be God. Mm-hmm. I have dreams of what's going to happen and have done since I was little. Um, but with the Leslie Mulseed case, I remember a gentleman saying, yes, uh, um, you're, part of, you're part of that Leslie Mulseed thing. And I remember thinking, well, how on earth? You know, and I, I want this really to be for a Christian setting because we have to wait for prophecies to come true. You know, if they're a God, then they come true. Mm. But I remember um, I went to a light out of darkness retreat when this had been prophesied over me that I would, uh, that, that my, my understanding of the Leslie Mulsey case and the cover up of the Leslie Mulsey case was linked to a paedophile ring and linked to my father. And by the way, Ronald Castry, who's now serving that sentence, had a shop right near my father's house, right near my father's shop in Ashton. Um, I went to a light out of darkness retreat with Maranatha and somebody posted a book through my door um, about the Leslie Mulsey case and I took it away with me. And I, and I was um, lying in bed and there was a, um, it was just a normal journalist book about the injustice of Stephen Kishko. And I got to a chapter and it said, Our Father in Heaven. And I thought, how strange to have that in the middle of this book. And at the end of the book it said, End of that chapter, it said, April Mulsey, that's Leslie's mum, vividly recollects a dream Leslie had. It was either a week or ten days before she was murdered. She met Jesus. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she said to her mum, he was as white as snow. But I said to him, I want to go home now. And the Lord said to me clearly, there's your own thing. I've got her. Mm. You see, because if we don't understand, when I dissociated as a child and I remember, I remember being abused um, and I remember being tied, used to tie me up and I remember being tied and the camera and photographs taken and all the child pornography that goes on, I remember being tied and I remember Jesus being right at the end of the bed and he said, just come here for a minute and I remember leaving the out of body experience that you have is because scripture says mm. man can hurt your body mm. but they can never yeah. touch your soul that's mm. God's so even when we don't understand horrific things that happen and how can God let that happen believe me God is in control mm. and he yeah. was I look back and I think I see his hand on every person I've met, that the same way he brings you through, he doesn't just bring you through for you to have this happy life. He, in Corinthians, it says, he comforts you to comfort others. Yes. Yeah. We share in his sufferings to share. He's, he, I'm just a, uh, Michelle, who's another intercessor at Lytham, 
Um, I did it after recently done a filming for Revelation TV. Do pray for Revelation TV mm. because they've just they've had a fine that's come to them for speaking out on I think it's you know sexuality issue, but they've had a fine anyway. I did the filming there a while ago um, to go on on that program, and I remember Michelle ringing me. I don't know whether I was either on the way to a police interview or something. Michelle said I've got a picture of the Valhalla ride at Blackpool. And uh, anybody who knows that ride, you get on the boat and, it, and it, it chugs up and then you hit the water and it carries you across this ride at Blackpool. She said, and I see you on the boat going across and there's a queue of people getting on. And I believe that just like the historical abuse case, the football case, yeah. where mm. one person mm. has the courage to come forward, mm. one, one person sees a church that's, that's there to equip and help them and say, Jesus can set you free and will set you free. Mm. Other people will come forward. And I'm simply just, I know I've been given a voice in this area. I remember this is as well about coming under spiritual authority, which is extremely important in the church that um, I was asked to go on UK Column. If you Google UK Column, Vicky Ash SRA survivor, you'll see my whole testimony on there. Um, now it's getting negative reviews by Hoaxted. But you know, it's funny, it's been up there for years, but now where you see the negative reviews, you know, you know it's coming. Yeah. It's been left alone for ages. But um, the, the day before I was due to do that Skyping for, with Brian Gerrish for UK Column, my pastor rang me and he said, uh, can, I, can I just come and, and see you? And it was before Fit for Life on the Wednesday. And I thought, oh, what have I done wrong? And he came to see me and he said, I need to apologize to you, Vicky. He said, because I've often thought, if you just were quiet about the Satanism, things would be a lot easier. <laughs> you know, if you just be quiet about the devil, you know. And there's a bit of that, you know, we don't glorify the devil, but, yeah. you know, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. So yeah. the devil's a very real <laughs> entity, but we don't, we don't, you know, there's a balance to be had. Anyway, he said, I always thought if you would just be quiet about Satanism, then we'd be, we'd be okay. He said, and God has told me, show me that you are going to be a voice. In SRA, and he, he'd already told me that anyway that I was the voice. I remember coming over here and he'd give me different signs you, you, you are the voice in this. But what it showed me was when I went to do that interview the next day, and I'd got all my poster notes stuck everywhere, all ready to do it in my way, and then it got that all went out the window because God says, Don't rehearse what you say beforehand, I'll give you the words. Yeah. All went through there. I felt such a peace about that interview, I felt, and that was live. I felt such a joy. Revelation TV was recently live. Mm. I felt such a joy because God showed me I was under spiritual authority. Mm. My pastor saying what he said, there was no chink in the armor. Do you understand? Yeah. So, yeah. so even if you don't understand, there's a place of blessing. There's a place of, of, of being under spiritual yeah. Of course you don't say under spiritual authority when you're being told to disobey the word of God or there's all sorts of things going on. But there is a place for spiritual authority where you pray for your leaders. Mm -hmm. There are spiritual laws. We're never fighting flesh and blood but principalities and powers in the unseen world. So we have to, the weapons we fight with are not carnal, but mighty in pulling down strongholds. We must have God's strategy yes. in every decision we make. Every decision, because he has the way through spiritually. I just want to read this. Therefore, since we have such a hope, 2 Corinthians 3, 12, we're very bold. <laughs> we're very bold. In these days, and as I share what God is doing, we need to be very, very bold. Mm -hmm. And that's what I didn't see. I saw a lot of Christians who were afraid. So when I was going in with my difficulties of needing major deliverance in my life, two years, but you know, I wasn't ready. When I looked back to courtrooms, and I wasn't ready. I wasn't equipped. I wasn't, I wasn't a soldier in the sense that I'm a soldier now. I didn't know the Lord intimately enough to, I'd have been, I'd have been falling at the first hurdle because he knows when you're ready. His timing is perfect. And um, shortly after coming away from NL Grange, um, Janet at the time, one of my counsellors, she said, you're going to have had to have walked with the Lord for a long time before you deal with your childhood. And I was so angry. But what have I got to do, sir? Some sort of apprenticeship for this God of yours? What do I have to do? But it was 12 years later 
people were talking about this couple in our church and I knew I still needed deliverance. I knew that I wasn't free. Don't keep saying you're free if you're not free. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm free, I'm free. Worry, worry, worry. I'm free, I'm free. <laughs> you're not free. <laughs> and I used to think we're all saying we're free, but you don't look free, you don't walk free. Then I'm not free. <laughs> and I want to be free. Do you know what I mean? And uh, she said to me, she said, yeah, you're going to have had to walk with the Lord for a long time. Mm -hmm. and I thought, this is just absolutely dreadful. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they were a couple that ministered deliverance. I thought, I need to go and see this couple. I still need to be set free. You know, I'm doing all the right things. I'm reading scripture. I'm going to every study there is. And I'm still not free. Because deliverance is a ministry. Deliverance is a ministry that, some, that God has equipped some people to have that is so needed in the church. And, um, and that's what I was saying. You know, we say deliver us from evil. The Lord's Prayer. Deliver us from evil. Deliver me from the demonic that I'm tied. Deliver me from the vows I made as a child. Deliver me from the christening I had in the occult. Deliver me from, from the vows and the curses that have been spoken over me. And replace it with what? Truth. Out with the old, you're a new creation. The renewing of your mind. <coughs> it's like a computer being reprogrammed. All the junk, I remember, you know, with my mum, I would always have said this to Margaret, where I, I always bought anodin because my mother bought anodin. And I remember walking around the supermarket thinking, I can have paracetamol. <laughs> <laughs> I can have paracetamol. <laughs> you know, because it's that programming that you just always do things the way you've got the same anger as your dad. Rubbish. You're a new creation in Christ. You shouldn't have anger like your dad. The sins of the fathers carried to the third and fourth generation. Cut them off. Yeah. No excuse to have an anger like your dad. Yeah. God's your father now. You're now down a new gene line. The blood of Christ. The, the, the old is gone. But it was moving into that freedom. Anyway, this couple that I was um, going to have ministry with, uh, and I remember thinking, you know, anyway, I sent my, they rang me and they said, can you just send us a picture of you? We think we know you. And it was the same woman 12 years previously at our grange. Oh. And Janet and Tony White, I remember saying to God, are these kosher? <laughs> white. So my surname is White, because that's what I have to say. Can I trust these people? Because there's a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. A lot of people talk the talk, but they don't, you know. There's a, you know, there's so much to learn, but it's an exciting journey. And I and I, even though my answers aren't here in the natural. I know that when I was going to take my own life that day and I was walking up the hill and, and I said, if you don't, I said, how can you look at the law and it's parallel? How can you look at evil? You know what they're saying about me? You know, I've got, my family have big connections in Saddleworth. I live right in the middle of all the cult activity and covenant activity on King Street where people are like, when I'm walking down the street, morning, <laughs> you know, every, you know, Saddleworth is, 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 where the witches meet. Mm. You know, you've got the Pengal witches, it's all the Moors murders. Yeah. Yeah. It's all around there. And, um, you know, and I, I look at how God has sovereignly positioned me in that place. Not to judge, but to shine the light. Yes. Jackie Pullinger, yes. when she was sent to Wall City, one woman, the drug barons, respected her. The drug barons respected her. The drug barons started getting saved because she went with the love of God to say you're deceived. Yeah. Satanists are more ready for Jesus coming back than Christians. Yeah. <laughs> Satanists yeah. know they're preparing. They're preparing for the ushering in of the Antichrist right now. There's going to be a one world order. And the church should be ready. But you know why we're ready and excited is because we know who's won. Yeah. We know the battles of the Lord. We know who's won. Mm -hmm. But these things will happen. And that's why it says be prepared for those things to happen. Don't be afraid. You know, in, in, in Luke, doesn't it? It says some will get will be drinking and mm -hmm. and, and the, the, all the cares of the world and dissipation and they'll be, they'll be drinking. But those who stand firm to the end will be saved. Some of us will be persecuted. Mm -hmm. I may go to prison. I've, I've already done that work with, with the Lord. Melody Shaw's in prison. Why not? I hope. I hope that I'm better out of prison to serve God than in prison. Mm -hmm. But I've already made that transaction. 
that it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. Yeah. Robert Greene, who, who, who has dealt with the Holly Gregg case, has been to prison three times for speaking out on the Holly Gregg case. We now have Alex Salmond on the news, and they say that they never had a complaint about, they said they've had no complaints about abuse. Yes, they have. The Holly Gregg case was a complaint. Robert Greene was silenced and put in prison to shut him up. Mm. And why do I know Robert Greene? Why am I part of CASTRA, the Coalition Against Satanic Ritual Abuse, where we meet in London every... I think, how I, I sit in ministry on a Wednesday and I think, <laughs> I can't even name the 12 disciples. What am I doing sat here? Because it's the Lord's appointment. Amen. And I don't have to worry about who I know or who I don't know. Mm. My only concern is that uh, my eyes are on Jesus. Amen. And I know that and everybody who even met me years ago in here know I am a totally different person. Transformed mm. from the inside out. Mm. But God is bringing the truth. Mm. He's lifting the veil mm. of Satanism. Mm. And then people will see, wow, how do you know who to vote for? Mm. But you will clearly know who to vote for. If, we, if, if we'd have known that Ted Heath, we'd have the Mike Veal case, Ted Heath was a Satanist. Would we have voted if we'd have known that he was a Satanist? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what God is saying, that then people are free to choose, but you have to give them the full knowledge. And there's been so much deception that we haven't had the full knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then, so you tell somebody about yoga. I had a friend who came to me who said, um, I think I can go to yoga, Vicky. I think I can go to yoga. I don't get into any argument with anybody. I say, well, if you think you can, that's fine, but I can't. <laughs> As for me and my household, I serve the Lord. I can't go to yoga. It doesn't mean I get into an arguing about it. She obviously has a revelation. So I said, well, I'll pray for you. Mm. Off she goes to yoga. And then before she knows it, they're getting into animal worship positions and making funny noises. And she rang me afterwards and she went, I had to come out of that meeting. She said, the Lord showed me. Hallelujah. The same, I had a friend who did reflexology. And she said, would you like me to do your thing? Love you, Ike. Wonderful Christian. Wonderful Christian minister. Love you, love you, Ike. But I can't have reflexology. Oh, I can't have reflexology. God showed me that that's rooted in wrong things. Because again, it's spiritual. Yeah. What's operating? What demon is operating? And people say all sorts, oh, well, I cover myself before I go in. <laughs> you hear all sorts, well, I cover myself with the blood before I go in. You shouldn't be going in in the first place, separate from everything that's unclean. But the reflexology, and I remember, again, she hadn't had revelation, so I kept praying for her and praying for her. And then there was a daughter that came to her with a scripture that says you can't sit and eat from the cup of demons and the cup of... Of, of the Lord <clears throat> and, and, and showed her and then you know the Lord said I want you to go back to every person you've done reflexology on and tell them the truth mm. now that was a call oh, well. yeah. and she did she went back to every person I said the Lord showed me that reflexology is not spiritually sound so I want to encourage you this fellowship is wonderful keep on walking with the Lord as you start seeing, you know, politics, we say that politics and religion don't mix. <laughs> I'm afraid we're called, the yeah. church is called to be a voice. Yeah. You can't say, oh, we, you can't mix. You have to know who the church is going to vote for. We have to pray for our leaders. We have to yeah. pray for yeah. Theresa May, who professes, you know, might be nominal Chrissy, but we have to pray because God has put uh, those people in leadership. We have to pray for Donald yeah. Trump. Yeah. We're called to pray for our leaders yeah. in authority. Mm -hmm. Right through history, God was the one that uprooted and pulled down. Yeah. 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 So we must yeah. pray that they get godly counsel, yeah. that the veil of deception is lifted off yeah. our leaders yeah. and not moan about them and be a tool for the enemy. That's mm -hmm. no good. That's mm -hmm. no power in that. No yeah. power in complaining and moaning. Mm -hmm. We need to do what the word tells us to do. Mm -hmm. And when we do what the word tells us to do and humble ourselves before God, he will come and heal our lives. Thank you for having me. If you have any questions at all, because sometimes I think people do have questions, then please ask me those questions. Um, just two things. One thing is, will you just explain how far the paedophilia, you know, how far it goes? And then the other thing is also, 
would you just tell the story that you told me about when you went to Todd Bentley and you were manifesting and how all the that situation and how somebody who understood about uh, satanical ritual abuse that was it yeah. yes Thank yeah, you. I, I did go on to that at one point when I was um, in the church and this man was talking about picks going into his feet it triggered me so I would hear things and then I would just walk I can't remember what happened and Kristen knows that or manifesting when we do all sorts of weird things in church all the time um, and, and that's been part but now you know Bless Kristen, she's come to a place. She gave your life to the Lord over here, didn't you? You got baptised. I remember Kristen calling me into her bedroom at midnight one night and saying, I want to give my life to the Lord over here. And I remember sitting at the end of the bed and going, oh, she's just visiting. You know, it was like, and then two weeks later, I want to get baptised. And she was baptised at Living Christian Centre. But only the other day, she said to me at home, that we were just talking because she, she, at work, at work you were talking about different people at work and there's a biker that comes in and she said, you know, I look at people's eyes more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I thought, carry on, Christian, shall I look at people's eyes? She said, no, I can see, I can see when they're on the dark side and I can see when they're in the and I can see. And years ago, it was prophesied over the Christians. Christian has um, uh, additional needs and ASD, but God spoke to me years ago saying she was unique. And that his ways weren't my ways, and that he would use it for his glory. And a minister walked past her one day and, and, um, in this service, and he said, Whose daughter is this? And he said, Mighty woman of God. Amen. And only this week as she shared her faith when everybody was talking about the, the, the gay festival at the weekend, and Kristen stood in that place and said, I believe a man should be with a man, and a woman should be with a woman. Yes. And I thought, She's standing. No, you mean I think you were the way around. Repent, repent, repent. But a man should be with a woman. But Kristen said those, those <laughs> Kristen stood. And I thought, you know, some of us won't even. But Kristen stood in that conversation. And even though she was challenged in that conversation, I said, but Kristen, that's what you're called to do. Yeah. You're called to represent Jesus in that yeah. situation. Yeah. And, and we see more and more, but, but um, um, so mm -hmm. I, I know that when I travel and things like that, God's already said that Crystal will come with me and, and, uh, and, and find her, her place in all that. But this particular gentleman, um, when I was manifesting in this place, there were big burly men and they were you know, praying over me and I was, I can't remember, I was all over the place and Jesus is Lord and nothing was happening. They just couldn't seem to deal with me. And then this lady came out of nowhere, this tiny lady, and she just had a Bible in her hand. And she just said, excuse me, excuse me, I know what's wrong. Excuse me, excuse me. And she just came up and she just put the Bible next to my head like this. And I came right out. I just remember, she just pat, I came right under the Bible. And she just said, excuse me, this way. And I just completely came out. And she took it and I thought, oh, isn't she bringing a team of people with her? Isn't she bringing help? She needs help, you know, because everybody gets frightened normally. And she said, um, you've been satanically ritually abused. And I said, yeah, she said, I, I had the team here. And then I thought, oh, she must be bringing more people into the office because she's on her own. And then she said, it's not that you are demonised with everything. Because I thought I was just got this legion of demons because I was always... She said, it's fragmentation. Mm. She said, you, you have split off. She said, so the woman that sat here today has, has accepted Jesus. But I can see a 16-year-old that has made a vow <laughs> that a man will never hurt her again. And there's a three-year-old still locked in there. And those are the, that's the healing and, 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 the, and, the, and the truth teams that come around. We've got various ministries now, Carolyn Bramhall, which is called the, the truth team, where you have a truth team in your church where you've got different ways of, of bringing truth yes. in place of the lies. And it's a journey yeah. of, of, of healing. You know, we know with a scar that it just does not heal instantly. Mm. It's a process. Yeah. Now I can look at that scar and I remember that I was drunk and burnt my arm in front of the fire. And, you know, I can remember there's no pain. Mm. I can talk about the abuse. There's no pain. I can talk about the things that happened to me with absolutely no pain. Amen. Because he's healed me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it was like it is like an old life. 
Mm. It happened to the old man. Mm. Yeah. And he's healed and restored me completely. Mm. And he will do the same for anybody who asks. Mm. What's the other mm. question? Has for the... Um, yes, yeah, right back an investigator, which is the, the stuff that's now gone into the police this time, right back through my family line right back to my great grandparents to um, girls who who had been abused in care child watch diane core from child watch um, her counselors were ministering to not ministering were helping two sisters in the early 90s who were describing a house that i described and I knew I needed to say this. When I was going to take my own life and I was walking up the hill and I said, how can you look at the law and you don't do anything about it? How can you see all this going on? Where, what is, and I heard the words, cook to, first three. Who's cooking? Who's cooking? And I came back to the house and I went to my Bible. I always go to the foot's dropping, you know, they say that a, a Bible that's falling to bits is only by life, it isn't, by the way. Mm -hmm. And I went to the front of the Bible, mm -hmm. and I'm looking, Here's my and, I'm looking <laughs> and I'm looking, and I'm looking, Habakkuk, ooh, cooking, Habakkuk. And I opened the Bible at Habakkuk, and Habakkuk was a prophet complaining about the very same mm -hmm. thing. And the scripture in my Bible said, you go to the tap you go to the tower and you write down what I'm saying so that other people will see it at a glance. The revelation awaits an appointed oh, time. Wow. And it may seem slow in coming, thirty years, but justice will be done. Mm -hmm. And when you say that you've been given a word from God, you see, in the parable of the soul it says if you've had a word spoken over you and you know it's from somebody reputable and you know, you, you know that somebody's right in the Lord. You must hold on to that seed because the enemy comes to steal the word that's been sown. How does he steal it? Doubt and unbelief. So it says those who pray don't believe that, you know, if you doubt, you like, a, you know, don't believe you've received anything if you're doubting. You're allowing the seed to come out, you see. So I've had my children have said it's never going to happen more. I've had my husband say it's never going to happen more. I've had and that and I, I've learned this principle even with praying for people with sickness or whatever. I don't listen to those words. Mm. I stand and have done for thirty years on that mm. rhema word that God gave me. Mm. The revelation awaits an appointed time, mm. and, and and that's what I've stood on. And He will do it. Mm. He will do it. I believe it will probably. You know, the first case in Britain, but I believe that he will do it, but he will do it for his glory. And it's in Psalm 40 where it says, Many um, uh, those who, who have said aha, aha, will be appalled at their own shame. But many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. You see, there's no fear of God now. Mm -hmm. There's no fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. And also, yeah. another part of fearing the Lord is I used to think, because I was very frightened of God. Remember, when you've had Satanism, then I was frightened of God. God was, I saw God like the enemy, a bit like Catholics really will see that hellfire and damnation is going to punish me. So I had the wrong vision, I had the wrong I, identity as God my Father. I had to work through all that. But the Lord led me to the Psalms where it says, to fear God is to hate sin. Yes. You see, I don't fear, he, he hates sin that much because it separates us from him, because yes. he's holy. So he comes to deal with that in our lives because he, he's a jealous God in that sense that he wants nothing, not the world's jealousy, to separate us from him. So he comes and he will deal with that jealousy if it's there. And he will deal because that's my child. Yes. That fear, that's my child. The fruit of that's my child, and that's why the pruning comes, and the because he wants us to be so intimate with him, yeah. and he's holy. Mm -hmm. But generationally, yes, more evidence has gone in, goes right back to my grandparents, right back into connections with um, people in Parliament. I mean, when I've read the stuff, I thought, oh my goodness me, I always knew it was big, mm -hmm. um, but didn't realise how big. But that's not my, my domain. I just have to walk the walk that I'm. So I would value your prayers, yeah. Yeah. value that you pray protection over all Casra who we're setting out, who we, we have a website. 
and pray for those victims yeah. to come forward and find their voice. Yeah. Pray for those yeah. victims to find the courage to, to you know, because I don't want people to come and stand behind me. I want them to come and stand next to me. Yeah. 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 You know, we're an army. Yeah. Not yeah. all, you know, but just come and, and the more, once the domino falls, I believe it will just be like a stack of, because God wants the sharks, not the tadpoles. He's going, yeah. he's going right to the heart of the establishment. Mm-hmm. So all the Alex Sand stuff is all linked. Everything that's happening politically is linked to the Tadpoles. are all family. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Sorry, guys. So, I'm going to make a well. See you. See you later. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We've just been looking at a lot of things, yes. we've been looking at the Satanism and yes. all those different things, but what we've also discussed is when people can't discredit you, they will discredit how other people see you. And that's mm. what I really felt to pay yes. Yes. right yes. now, say, if it's alright, we can just pay for you. Yes. And like, Lord, we just thank you for Vicky. Thank you. Lord, we've paid for a, a shield of protection around her. Lord, a hedge of protection around her, all the way around her, around her family.